Today on Grandma's Cooking, Grandma Anna Maria takes us inside her 300-year-old theater to teach us how to make a savory chicken with cinnamon that will be served beside a little bird's nest made of lettuce, avocado, and radishes for eggs. My name is Eric Kennan, and I'm on a mission to learn to make amazing Mexican food. Not surprisingly, the best chefs in Mexico are Mexican grandmothers. Come with me as these grandma chefs teach us authentic recipes that we can make at home. We'll eat a lot of great food, and we'll have a lot of adventures too. I love going to Mexican markets with the ingredients list that grandma gave me. It's fun to get lost amongst all the piñatas, limes, tomatoes, and avocados. Fresh ingredients are abundant in Mexico. This is how I want to decorate for Christmas, with red and green chorizo sausages. The green ones are made with jalapenos. Grandma Ana Maria asked for an entire chicken, so I sought out the market's best pollero, or chicken seller. The grandmother who's going to teach us to cook today, she's the owner of this theater. It's been in her family forever. She comes from generations and generations of actor. Um, I'm friends with her grandson. They all act together in the shows. The whole family, they put on the shows together. I remember grandma came out at the end and <laughs> slapped her grandson around. She's a real character. When I met grandma in Maria's theater is called Corral de las Comedias, a comedy corral. Hey, hey, hey. Hola, she told me about the haunted tunnels underneath her theater and how they can still hear spirits walking around at night. The entrance to her home is the entrance to the stunning theater. This is one of the most famous theaters in Mexico and has seen thousands of productions on its stage. I actually have some footage from a children's play I saw a few years ago. The two actors you see here are none other than Anna Maria's son and grandson. When you're at a play here, you can't help but laugh hysterically. I think you can see why it's called the Comedy Corral. Working in theater has brought Anna Maria a life full of adventure and travel. She told me about the honor of being invited to perform at one of the oldest theaters in Spain and also of traveling up to the mountain villages of Mexico to bring theatrical performance to isolated villages where no one could read or write. I asked her if she could show me the costume closet. Her theatrical nature came out when we found some of the costumes and props from plays of the past. Yo también quiero probar. Qué bueno que fueran de verdad. Ya no vamos a tener hambre por. Muy bien. Okay. Eso es la cocina. Es la cocina. Es muy rústica, pero vamos a hacer un guisado un poco sabroso y antiguo. And here we can see all the ingredients we'll be using to make Grandma Ana Maria's pollo mechado. I wanted to show you really quick what we've got here: black pepper, white vinegar, olive oil. Turnips, cinnamon, avocado, laurel leaves, lettuce, and chicken. This is a recipe that comes from the times of my grandmothers, my grandmothers, my mother. My mother was famous for being a very good cook, like my tías. And it's called pollo mechado. Pollo mechado. Here, Grandma Ana Maria is putting the pieces of chicken in water, but just enough water to barely cover the chicken. She told me, we're not boiling it because this water is going to simmer down into a savory sauce. Los ingredientes que son, si me los pasas por favor, sí. son unas 5 o 6 hojas de laurel. Esto lo ponemos por aquí. Entonces, la primera hay que calcularle que no sea demasiada porque si no, no, no queda el punto como debe de ser. Se le pone también una Entonces, cucharada de Entonces, por todo eso solamente hemos puesto sí. dos trocitos. Dos trocitos. 
un poquito de vinagre, pusimos un como poco algo, de así, algo así, más como o menos. dos trocitos más o menos, por todo este pollo entero. Eh, uh, yo lo estoy calculando porque se pone que las buenas cocineras, que yo no lo sé mucho, tienen que ponerle al tanteo, ¿no? Pero resulta que esto es más o menos como una cucharada grande o dos pequeñas. Pimienta negra, ¿sí? Este, este, sí, pimienta negra. Deben de ser seis o siete pimientas gordas. Esto sí. es demasiado moderno. Yo no soy moderna, pero esto es lo que tenemos, ¿no? Entonces se pone que se puede así. ¿Y tienes que ser molido o lo puede ser? No, puede ser. Deben de entero. ser entero. Deben de ser enteros. La sal no debe de ser muchísima, no. porque esto se va a resumir o resetar como digamos, entonces podría quedar salado. Más vale que después se rectifique la salsa. Ahora vamos a pulir ahora y ahora vamos a preparar la lechuga que debe estar de manera muy, pero muy física. Grandma Ana Maria slices the lettuce into fine strips that will be mixed in with avocado, lime, and salt. ¿Y es una receta bien mexicana o tiene gracias? Bien mexicana. No, no, no creo. Bueno, mi abuela era de ascendencia francesa y española. Y ella era la que nos tenía siempre al pendiente de todas sus recetas. Ella era muy buena cocinera, igual mi madre, mis hermanas. Yo no soy muy buena cocinera, se los digo, ¿eh? La manera de este, hacerla para guacamole picado, se pica dentro de la misma cáscara. ¿no? Se va a hacer primero tira, luego en sentido, luego en el otro. Y luego hasta se puede condimentar aquí mismo. Tenemos dos árboles de limones, pero no trajimos los limones. Y vamos a ir trabajando de condimentar. We're on an emergency mission. We're inside cooking, but she needs a lime and she needs one fast. So she sent us outside to this little courtyard of hers. I'll bring her a few limes. They have got thorns on them. She didn't tell me that. No wonder she sent me out here to do this. But uh, something that's really tricky in Spanish is they're called limón, which sounds to me like lemon, but limón in Spanish, that means lime. So She's making a sort of guacamole salad that complements the chicken. Hmm, I've never seen guacamole with lettuce in it before. All right, here we go. What's perfecto? Sí, la mezcla de lima y sal ahora es perfecto. Esto se supone que se llama nidos. Aquí vas a hacer un nido. What an interesting touch. She cut up little radishes and placed them like little bird's eggs on the nest. Yum! The chicken was coming along nicely, with the water boiling down and the chicken grease coming out to create a delicious broth that will ladle over the chicken once we serve it. Mmm, 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 I can't wait for this chicken to get out of the pot. Está a punto de estar en la consistencia que usted le está la salsa, o sea, la grasa. She took some of the stock and put it over into a smaller simmering pan so she could really boil it down. She then took it to the table plated it next to the bird's nest and adorned the whole thing with potato chips. Tiene estas maravillas modernas, se hacía con papas ralladas en casa, fritas en un caso con mucho aceite, o mante. I'm excited to see how this turned out. This chicken smells so darn good, I can barely wait. This was episode one of Grandma's Cooking Goes to Mexico. We're here in central Mexico in a 300-year-old theater teaching you to make authentic Mexican recipes. And now it's time a comer, to eat. Shall we?